Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Gotham City, as many of you know, is the home of Batman. Its atmosphere is a dark, foreboding metropolis, rife with crime, grime, and urban decay. I'm going to show you how to create this massive entrance sign to Gotham City. This document is 1280 by 720 pixels with a resolution of 72 pixels per inch. I downloaded this wall from cgtextures.com. Call up your type tool and then click on the character text box. I'm choosing a font called DecoTech which you can download for free at defont.com. Set your text on your document and then temporarily hide it by clicking off the eyeball in the layers panel. Click 3D and then new 3D postcard from layer. I initially enlarged our wall but clicking on 3D automatically brought our entire wall into our view. Click on the 3D layer icon and then the scale tool. Click on the wall and drag straight down. This enlarges it. The reason we enlarge the wall is because we're ultimately going to rotate it in perspective and don't want to cut off any of it when we do. Click on the 3D object pan tool and click and drag straight up to slide the wall up. Click on Window and then click 3D. Click on the Materials icon and then the arrow next to the ball. Then click on the arrow in the pop-up window. Click New Material which will create a new texture preset made from our wall. Since I already saved this texture I won't click on it. However, when you do you'll see a window pop up. Just type in the name you want to designate to it. Close the texture window and make your text active. Go to 3D, Repose, and Text Layer. Click Yes to rasterize the text. The Repose window immediately appears. By clicking and rotating the text you can better see the depth of the extrusion. It's a bit too deep so let's change the depth to 0.5. Click on the Home button to reset the position of the text so it's facing front. Let's add bevels to the face of our text. With the front of our text chosen, change the height and width both to 2. Click on All, which will wrap a texture around our entire text. We'll choose the new texture I created that was made from our wall. Let's change the texture of the bevel. Click on the arrow next to it and scroll up the thumbnails. I'm choosing the marble stone texture. This brightens the edges of the letters while still retaining a carved stone look. Press shift as you click on the base to highlight both layers. Go to the top and click 3D and then click Merge 3D Layers. Our text looks as if it disappeared but in fact if you scale it down and rotate it, you'll see that the text is behind the wall in space. Click on the Home button at the top to reposition it front and center. Click on the Mesh tool, hide the base, which is the wall, and click on the text. Click on the Mesh button and choose the Scale tool. Click and drag down to reduce its size. Go back to Mesh and click on the Slide tool and click and drag down to slide it forward in space. Click on the base wall to make it visible. Let's rotate this around so we can see it in perspective. Click on the 3D object tool and choose rotate. Click on the image and rotate it around. See how our text is positioned in front of the wall. Click on the home button to snap our image back in position. We're ready to add the lighting. Click on the light bulb and choose Spotlights. Click on the middle icon and choose New Spotlight. Click on the Materials button and then click on the Ambient Color. Pick a dark gray around 20% in brightness. Now we can see our Spotlight much better. You may find it easier if you press Ctrl or Command H to see the grid lines of our Spotlight. Click on the 3D Light button and choose Slide. Click and drag down to slide our light source further away in space. Go back to the 3D light button and choose Pan. 
The pan tool allows you to reposition the spotlight on its X axis. Go back to the 3D light tool and choose rotate. The rotate tool allows us to pivot and thereby angle the source of our spotlight. To get just the right light, you really need to play with the slide, pan, and rotate tools until you become familiar with them. Let's change the ambient light on our text to blend it better into the environment. Click on the materials button and then click on front inflation. This is the face of our text. Click on the ambient color box. I'm choosing about a 60% gray. Next, click on extrusion. This is the sides of our text. Click on the ambient color. For this, I'm choosing about 40% brightness. Let's do a quick render to see what this looks like. Click on the 3D Scenes button and choose Ray Trace Draft. It's not a full rendering, but it allows us to quickly see how the lights interact with the 3D objects. Let's turn off the render and click back on Interactive. The last step is to pivot the entire image in space on its x-axis, so it looks like we're looking up at it. To do this, click on the 3D Object tool and choose Rotate. Click on the image and drag your cursor up. Go back to the 3D Object tool and choose Pan. Click and drag up to slide our image up. Press Ctrl or Command H to see the grid lines, light sources, and render boxes. In the Scenes panel, click on Quality and choose Ray Traced Final. Photoshop is now fully rendering our 3D environment. This process takes quite a while, so I'm going to grab a cup of coffee and will return when it's finished. I'm back, and as you can see, our Gotham City entrance sign is fully realized as it looms in the darkness of this massive wall of Batman's metropolis. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching. <laughs>